Next up, it's time to jam to the tunes and to the sound of what you hear. How ironic, because our next topic is sound. The Super Nintendo was defined as a game system that has superb sound in the music and sound effects than the Sega Genesis. As I heard the tunes for Mega Man X, I had no idea that the transition between the Mega Man series to Mega Man X could get so much better. Most of the tunes were given a facelift when the NES was limited to a few MIDI sounds, as Mega Man X used a vast array of musical instruments in the compositions. With those types of sounds that was represented in the game, I immediately jammed up the volume on my TV because most of them were really catchy. Even the sound effects sounded very good as Capcom could define their sound effects in most of their older games like Konami back then. That was a charm for both companies, and Mega Man X really took the cake. Now in the remake, the music from the original is all present, and that is a huge plus as opposed to TMNT Reshelled. The sound effects are mixed with the sounds of the Super Nintendo game and the Mega Man X games that were released on the PlayStation 2. The sounds from the PS2 games are okay, but they take away the charm of the sound effects in the original games as they are more artificial and less realistic. However, what gives the remake bigger points is its inclusion of voice acting. I will be honest about this, but the voices of X and Zero speak more than themselves. Both Mark Gotha and Lucas Gilbertson bring themselves into the characters as they almost become what they are. Some people may complain that Zero sounds more like a surfer, but I like his voice much better than the voices in Mega Man X4 and X7. Mark Gotha is even better as he and Gilbertson make X and Zero be more like teenagers than adults. If anyone is an adult, then it's Sigma. Most of the voice acting is done by Ocean Group Studios in Canada, and they are more well known for voicing the English dubs of Inuyasha and Death Note. By comparing both games to an overall conclusion, each game has its own strengths and weaknesses in terms of sound but the Super Nintendo game was more fun to listen to because of its soundtrack and sound effects. The PSP game was fun to listen to with some of the music, some of the sound, and almost all the voice acting, but the original game had more quality than quantity in what we hear, and that is the key word for this category, quality. You hear how strong the sounds are for both games, while the original is more on top. So all in all, the point on sound goes to the original. Remix falling behind, but can it get back up into the competition? Well, grab your popcorn and soda and be prepared for a feature presentation. As hence, it's time to present to you the next topic, presentation. Mega Man X was pretty much a throwback to the original format of the Mega Man series, but we are given an introductory stage for the first time. As soon as the stage is complete, the game is immediately taken to the stage selection screen for you to choose what Maverick you want to take on. As you go through the stages, you come across enemies that leave energy capsules for both your health and weapons after they are defeated. Not only that, but there are health upgrades in all stages and sub-tanks and armor upgrades in four stages each. After you complete the stages, you are given the privilege to go through the last four stages at Sigma's Fortress. That is the basic premise of that. Now, in Mega Man Maverick Hunter X, everything follows the same as the Super Nintendo game but the armor upgrades are switched in the four respective stages in where you found them. Now, one of the biggest aspects that comes for a game would be its content. The original game did not have much in terms of what can be attained as an extra, but the only one present is obtaining the Hadouken technique that pays homage to Ryu and Ken from Street Fighter 2. This is obtained in Armored Armadillo stage, but you have to kill X five times in order to see the armor upgrade capsule that delivers you that prize. The remake has the same feature, but the objective to get that upgrade is way different, as you have to make it all the way to the end of the stage without taking any damage whatsoever. That is not all the remake had to offer, but another game mode where you can fully play as Vile in all the stages in his perspective was present as well. He even has a variety of abilities in which he can attach to his three main weapons for different attacks. Probably the biggest piece of content in the remake would be the original video animation that tells how Sigma went Maverick and how the story brings you into X, Zero, and Sigma's character. It is a very entertaining movie, and I never get tired of watching it. Finally, the biggest outcome of this section is both games' save functionalities. In the original, once you complete a stage, you are given a password of about 12 different numbers, and that can prove to be a very big hassle because you do not want to write down all those variables. The PSP game fixes that problem by adding a save feature for when you come back. Indeed, it is a welcome fix. 
Another thing that is a big plus for the remake is the fact that you do not have to work your way from the beginning of the Sigma stages as you can select which one you want to go to when you come back to play the game from the last point you saved. That was a big problem in the original game as you had to go all the way back to the beginning of the final stages whenever you resume the game from the last password. For everything that I have mentioned in this section, the winner definitely has to go to the remake. should have been worried about me. Okay gamers, both games are tied for the finish. It's now time to see who comes out as King of the Hill. I present to you the final topic. Controls. With every game, you have to know if the controls are very solid and hardly faulty to make sure that it is really fun to play. By looking at the original Mega Man X, the controls are utilized on the Super Nintendo with the command cross, select button, start button, left and right shoulder buttons, and the four main buttons on the right. The A button is used to dash, the B button is used to jump, and both the X and Y buttons are used to either fire off the X Buster gun or the special abilities. Hitting the L and R buttons at the top will switch between the different power-ups. Finally, the start button takes you to the open menu to manually switch between power-ups, using sub-tanks, and viewing both your life bar and the number of lives. Even there is an exit feature for you to leave the stage that you have already completed. Now with Maverick Hunter X, everything in the controls are set up to be the exact same as the Super Nintendo game, but it can be a little more intricate with the inclusion of Vile's power-ups. As I look at both games, I can see that both of them have controls that are hardly faulty and they are responsive at the same time. However, I do find one little problem with the PSP game. Some of the controls for when you dash, jump, and attack can feel a little bit stiff and very sensitive. This goes for when you jump onto platforms that are above gaps that lead you to your death. The Super Nintendo game has that same sensitivity for when you jump across platforms, but you have better control for when you are shooting, jumping, and dashing all together. I even like the fact that there are many power-ups in the Super Nintendo game that are simple and very sophisticated, whereas I said that the number of power-ups in Maverick Hunter X is somewhat intricate. This is mainly because of the inclusion of Vile's power-ups. I do like the fact that Vile has many different abilities for his Vulcan, Arm Cannon, and Bombs, but I feel that there should be certain power-ups that are fully mandatory, whereas some are just plainly useless. That right there sets the remake back from being King of the Hill. So all in all, the original is actually a more fun game to play. I mean, I'm not saying that as a bad thing for the remake. I mean, it has its own unique qualities that stand out from the original. But the original is just more fun to play because of its controls. And that's the key word there. Control. You feel like you're in control of Mega Man X, whereas the controls in the remake feel a little more stiff. But anyway, both games are great, but in all honesty, the original comes out to be an all-around winner. So I'd like to thank you all for watching episode 7 of Double RPG Reviews, and I'll be back next time to present to you another review that will be around this time for Christmas. So, this is Double RPG, and I'm signing out. Later, gamers!